Pacing back and forth outside the barn, I thought about how horses do two things when posed with a threat, fight or flight. But I was not a horse. I was a 22-year-old working as a horse caretaker fresh out of college. When posed with a threat, my reaction was to cry, blame myself, sleep with someone. <laughs> but I realized that hadn't fixed anything. So when my boss arrived, the first words out of my mouth were, Liz, I'm quitting. She said I was being unprofessional. I said it was unprofessional to run a camp with horses you knew nothing about and hire a random girl off the internet to take care of them. <laughs> that night, we had a meeting. The people who had been slowly enroaching on my sanity for the past weeks were begging me to stay. They clearly didn't know the right technique. Their comments oscillated between, you really need to stay here and clean up the mess you've made, and everything was going great until this past week. Why let one hiccup ruin it? When soda came up, I started to cry. Liz said, soda's fine. We called the farm yesterday, and he recovered. So can you stop this now? The first horse had collapsed three weeks into my tenure as head horse caretaker at Camp Strauss. Freckles, a spunky pony with a flea-bitten gray coat, had knocked his rider off and started rolling on the ground and biting at his stomach. As we waited for the vet, we could barely keep him standing. I knew this was colic, a common but very serious horse illness, the equivalent of stomach flu, but horses can't throw up. If you keep the horse walking, the vet can pump their stomach, and they come away relatively unscathed. But the horse's natural reaction is to roll, which will twist his stomach. This requires major surgery, which a horse rental company won't shell out for, meaning freckles will go to the great pasture in the sky. The other caretakers and I took turns walking freckles around the barn. It became difficult as the hour passed. He strained at the lead rope, trying to pull himself to the ground. When the vet arrived, he ran to us from his truck. Did he make it all the way down? He asked. No, he first tried to roll in a trail, but we got him up right away. Let's hope we caught it. Which of you has the most experience with horses? I looked around, saw the averted eyes of my fellow caretakers, and stepped forward because it seemed like the responsible thing to do. He put Freckles' ear in my hand and instructed me how to twist it so that he wouldn't move. The vet began to thread a clear plastic tube up through the horse's nose. Freckles relaxed as the anesthetic took hold. When the procedure was done, everything was eerily calm. The vet told me to watch Freckles for two hours. If he passed manure, we were in the clear. The Freckles incident occurred early in so early in the summer that I didn't know what normal was at Camp Strauss. I'd gotten used to college, boundless free time, drinking in the afternoon. Working 14-hour days with children and horses didn't suit my new tastes. I once had a passion for horses, but I let it slide due to lack of funds. Camp Strauss was designed to give inner-city kids a taste of outdoor activities, and the horses were only a small part of the larger program. Head horse caretakers seemed like a job I could do. Working with horses again sounded fun. My plan had some holes. I was the only person on camp property who had touched a horse for longer than it took to feed it a carrot. This meant that when anything went wrong, I had no one to ask for advice. Horses are complicated, like taking care of a herd of boulder-sized children who haven't learned how to talk. I quickly grew overwhelmed. I took the stress out by going out drinking every night off with my coworkers, only to get up at 6 a.m. and run the barn. I was miserable, but I felt guilty for being miserable when I was working with kids who would probably never know the privilege of a misery based in missing liberal arts school. <laughs> I'm sure the persistent hangovers and exhaustion did not make me into a better employee. I resented getting berated for not shoveling enough manure during the 10 minute breaks between rides when less than two months ago, my work had involved running a writing workshop where the students were all my friends. Then, week seven, the week of horror. Monday began with colic, another horse down before lunch. The vet came, the horse made it through, but suspicion started to nag at me. Twice in a summer didn't seem right. It slowly dawned on me that all this had gone unaddressed in my job interview. They'd asked about my leadership experience, my future plans, nothing about actually taking care of horses. 
And then there was the bin of grain hidden in the back of the tack room. Should I have thrown it out during staff training? It must have been at least a year old. Does horse grain go bad? On Thursday, when I got to the barn, the tack room door was open and the bin was empty. Four cubic feet of year-old grain. Is that in the stomach of a horse now? The first hour of the day went by as normal, even though my heart was screaming in my chest. I wanted to run away, flee the camp, and let the horses fall where they might. I was riding my favorite horse, Soda. Usually he was flighty and eager, much more fun than a typical rental horse. But today he was acting funny. He seemed slower, more labored, lacking his usual enthusiasm. Finally, I felt his knees start to buckle beneath me. I jumped off and tried to lead him back to the barn, but he just fell to the ground and began to roll. Soda, no! I radioed Liz, hoping she'd hear my sobs and put some of her leadership knowledge to good use and not scream at me. No such luck. Tell me what's going on. We've never had this in a summer before. The words came up like bile, like sickly sweet vomit that a horse couldn't get out of his body. It's my fault, Liz. There was some old grain in the tack room. I think he got into it last night. You should call the vet right away. I don't see how you could have let this happen, was all she said. When the vet came, everyone was quiet. He repeated the dire monologue. Watch him. Let him have access to water. If he tries to go down again, call me. I started to calm down as we walked soda around the pasture. It seemed that everything would be okay. Liz left to lead the evening program. I took soda to his stall to let him try and drink, and he dropped to the ground again. I threw my arms in the air and grabbed at him, screaming and crying. I tried dragging him around the pasture and pulled out my phone. First I called the vet, and then I called my mother. I knew it was the last thing I should have been doing, but I had to tell someone how broken I was, how I wondered if three horses colicking in one summer was all my fault. If I had been careless enough to leave this year-old grain out, what else could I have done wrong? How many more horses would get sick in the two weeks before camp ended? She told me it wasn't my fault, that these things happened. She loved me. I only sobbed. The next day, I still had to work. I bottled it up and pretended everything was normal. The next night, I had to go to the bars. My friends were telling me I should get my mind off it, so I drank all weekend, went shopping, and slept with the guy who'd been casually hitting on me for the past few weeks. <laughs> when I got back to the barn Sunday night, I found another horse colicking and decided I couldn't do this anymore. That's when I called Liz and told her to get her ass over here, fight or flight be damned. I had thought that Soda was dead, but I found out at the meeting that he was alive. I was shocked and relieved, but it didn't change my resolve. Nothing I did now was gonna change his fate. The creature who was still in jeopardy in this situation was me. What I'd forgotten up until the fourth horse fell was that the camp, the directors, the horses, none of them were in control of what happened to me. This was not a natural disaster. I'd made the poor decision to take a difficult job without thinking if I was prepared for it. I could also make the decision to leave that job. When I said the final word, Liz's voice turned to stone. Well, I'm sorry you couldn't hack it. I almost laughed. Insulting my intensity wasn't going to deliver me a final blow. Stemming from that final moment, I never regretted quitting Camp Strauss. I'd rather be a person who quit the job than one who, than one who didn't cry about dying horses. <laughs>